What's up guys, it's Ugly Strew here, and last year I created a Great Beginner's Guide uh, to help new players get started in Path of Exile. It covered a lot of basic to intermediate topics that will help a new player make it through the story and get to the end game. And it received a lot of positive feedback and even encouraged me to make a few more videos diving deeper into some of the mechanics that could be confusing to new players. However, as time went on and as I played more Path of Exile, I started to realize where I went wrong with these videos and how my experience in the game sort of warped my opinion on how quote unquote easy it may be for new players to hop in and start playing. And after a few more leagues and my daily playtime becoming a bit more casual, I began to really realize these flaws in this game and the reasonable concerns from new players that sort of prevent them from putting any more than a few hours into this game from the get-go. So my tutorial video that I made was created during the Legion League, and since Legion, there have been five more leagues and mini expansions released. Uh, we had Blight, we had Metamorph, which came with the Conquerors of the Atlas Endgame uh, expansion, uh, Delirium, Harvest, and Heist. And each league brought forth interesting mechanics that ranged from new crafting methods, new affixes, uh, new skill gems, and entire reworks of the endgame to sort of continue the story from the War of the Atlas that we knew for the couple years prior. And these were all great additions to the game, and it really kept Path of Exile alive and fresh for active players. But for new players, or more casual players, this spawned additional confusion and even more overwhelming aspects on top of what the game already had to offer. As if the game's complexity wasn't enough of a turnoff to a lot of new players, these added mechanics furthered that idea and really turned this game into a headache or what felt like a job rather than a form of entertainment. First and foremost, I'd like to add the disclaimer that this video is not meant to attack Grinding Gear games or their methods of development and game design. I'm also not here to bash on the game's complexity because I do believe that complexity for a game is very, very good and absolutely required for a game to have any sort of longevity or hardcore player base. But I believe that there is a line between complex and convoluted, and I believe that Grinding Gear Games has since crossed that bridge and turned Path of Exile into what I believe to be a convoluted mess. Now it's really hard to gather true statistics about how far certain percentages of players reach in the game or how much currency they may gather, so a lot of this knowledge goes off of my own personal experiences, uh, some steamed statistics, and the voices of other players in the community. And as of today, I have a little over 1600 hours in this game, so I believe I am experienced enough to speak on this regard. First, I'd like to cover a more heavily debated topic about the game, and that is about how free the game truly is to play. While Path of Exile isn't subscription-based, and while you can't really buy in-game currency, you still need to buy additional stash tabs in order to trade uh, to efficiently organize your stash, and just overall excel in the game. Of course, you can probably still kill Awakener 8 Cyrus on a full free-to-play account, but it's going to take much more effort, and you will be missing out on a lot of quality of life that makes the game uh, less of a headache to play. You won't be able to sell any items on the market, you won't have any organization of your maps or your currency, and you'll just be very limited on what you can actually collect. And obviously, if you're playing the game enough where you plan on making it to the endgame bosses, uh, dumping a few dollars into it to support the developers really isn't a bad idea, but saying the game is 100% free to play can be kind of misleading, so I do apologize for making that comment in my beginner's guide. Now, one thing that has always significantly bothered me about Path of Exile was the lack of in-game utilities to assist players with things like trading or theory crafting or even just a glossary containing a list of crafting affixes or possible outcomes for certain items. The game is practically none of that at all other than a few tutorials that you're given as you progress through the story. You always sort of had to make sure that you had the latest version of Path of Building, uh, you had PoE.Trade open in your browser, your auto hotkey trade macro running in the background, uh, Path of Exile database on standby for when you're ready to start crafting, and while all of these tools are great, free, and readily available to the general public, they are all built and maintained by ordinary people in the Path of Exile community, and often have problems such as uh, performance issues like a slow trade API, uh, obsolescence or portraying inaccurate information, or they just straight up become unsupported. For example, two of my favorite utilities, uh, poeaffix.net and the official path of building that was made by a gentleman who goes by Open uh, Open Arl. He actually uh, recently got employed by Grinding Your Games, so he kind of had to put path of building on the side, and now the community has taken over a fork of that development. Um, but anyway, I used to uh, use these utilities to learn a lot about the game and have become very obsolete and are now pretty much useless in the current state of Path of Exile. 
And for new players, not only do you have to know that these new tools exist and where to find them, uh, but then you need to know how to use them to your advantage. And the tools alone can be very, very difficult to use due to all of the functionality or sometimes the lack of, and very, very hard to get accurate results from them unless you sort of know what you're doing. A good example of this that I ran into early on in my playing was the complexity and inaccuracy of the quote-unquote enemy is shocked feature in Path of Building, which always gives a sort of max effective shock and isn't really realistic compared to your build most of the time. So not only do you have to learn the Path of Exile game itself, you now need to learn how to use these community-built tools that have absolutely no standard and pray that they are accurate for the current version of the game. Now a lot more experienced players may shit on me for this, but some of these community built utilities just aren't user friendly or are very very messy to navigate and read, and even gets messier the more grinding your games adds to Path of Exile. And I love the community for making these tools, don't get me wrong, but the fact that you need all of these additional platforms to get anywhere in the game, or even just to learn the game's mechanics is kind of ridiculous, especially for new players that are just trying to get the hang of Path of Exile. The lack of in-game documentation and tutorials becomes much more apparent when you stop playing the league or stop playing the game for a league or two and then try to understand what the hell is going on with a new NPC or a new crafting device or a new type of currency that they introduce and this is where the whole Krangled meme came from if you're familiar with that and while we laugh about it it's extremely true and becomes more and more relevant after each passing league. On the same line of community-built utilities, we can't really blame the developers of these utilities for the issues that they may have, and this is because grinding your games is constantly changing so much about the game that these developers just can't keep up anymore. Uh, the Atlas gets shuffled every three months, the skill tree suffers significant changes with uh, node placements and node balances, uh, skill gems get reworked, affixes get added, affixes get removed, affix values get rebalanced, new shit like cluster jewels appear, uh, new buffs and debuffs appear, uh, new base types appear, uh, and I can go on and on all day about this. And these things change significantly, and at the most every three months. And sometimes stuff gets changed mid-league, and a build guide that you started following last week may be completely out of date by the time you hit level 70. You know, grinding your games changes so much all of the time, and the community cannot keep up with it. And while change is great in keeping a game alive and fresh, it confuses the absolute hell out of people who may not be visiting the Path of Exile subreddit every damn day. You know, very, very few builds, for example, have maintained their utility over a few patches at a time, but a majority of builds you see will become completely obsolete given a maximum of, say, three months. And as I said, change is good, but I don't believe things need to change as frequently as they do, and as much as they do. Uh, for example, grinding your games has this tendency to pick a skill mechanic and then let that rain for three months, and then nerf it to shit, and then end up buffing another skill mechanic the following league. And they did this with melee builds in Legion, and then summoner builds in Blight, and while it may be good to be cycling through these ascendancies and constantly making changes to how the game plays, casual players and new players just can't keep up unless they are spending countless hours browsing Reddit or reading patch notes or mucking around with these utilities that they may or may not be reflecting the accurate changes here, and new players and casual players aren't going to go reading 12 pages of patch notes, especially when they don't understand what they're looking at. And don't get me wrong, I love grinding your games for keeping the game fresh and constantly releasing these updates at no charge to the player base, but I believe the overall magnitude of these changes and lack of in-game resources really make these very, very difficult to adapt to if you are a more casual player. Now, I know I keep bringing up the Path of Exile subreddit, but that's because they are the most active group of Path of Exile players that are voicing their opinions actively and spreading knowledge about the game, and often influencing these developers to make much needed changes to the game. And the problem here is that the community spawns a lot of elitism and toxicity between more experienced players and more casual players. A lot of the toxicity comes in forms of new, newer casual players um, asking for help, and these boomers who have been playing since Talisman League telling them that they are retarded and they just need to get good. And this exists in all gaming communities, but the problem with Path of Exile specifically is that the game is primarily community driven. So if the community is running the game, and the community is run by toxic assholes, the game itself is inherently going to support toxicity. And it doesn't just come into play with new players receiving solicited criticism, it's spread by all of the more advanced players talking about how quote unquote easy certain things are. They talk about how easy it is to craft a certain item that potentially costs an absurd amount of currency that new players can't really get, 
or how easy it is to earn exalted orbs or how easy it is to synergize your build. The term easy is very, very subjective in this game and the community does their part in both directly and indirectly belittling these players who think the game is far too much to learn. People often like to call Path of Exile the Rick and Morty of video games because of how pretentious the community is and how Path of Exile quote unquote should only be played by intellectuals. Yeah, the game will come easy to you if you do nothing but dick around and path the building for 8 hours a day and then farm mirrors with your friends for hours on end every single day. But the fact of the matter is that a very, very small amount of players actually devote that kind of time to the game. Hell, I think only 19% of players actually completed the Labyrinth for the first time, and only 14% of players even complete an endgame map. And I feel like the elitism in the community, and the fact that the game is solely developed off of the elite players' opinions, is what causes these numbers to be so ridiculously low. And people are quick to realize that they need to devote a lot of time into learning the game, and devote a lot of time into playing the game. And a lot of players just don't have that kind of time, so they give up and they go play Diablo 3 or Grim Dawn, and quite frankly, I don't blame them. I can't think of any other game out there that requires this much research and time just to learn what you're doing. Not even World of Warcraft requires this much of a time investment, and that game is notorious for being played by just like neats in their mom's basement. And granted, a lot of this is due to uh, things like politics and economics, because the hardcore players are going to be the ones that are spending more money on things like microtransactions and stash tabs, and grinding your games needs to make their money somehow. But these hardcore players contributing to the toxic elitism can't be the ones who then turn around and cry when the game starts losing players, and grinding your games cannot sit there and wonder why their player base isn't growing at the rate of other games, you know, you can't have your cake and eat it too here. The hardcore players are also the quickest to defend the game by saying things like, oh, you don't have to play for 8 hours a day to make a good character, or oh, you don't need mirror gear to do X, Y, and Z, but of course you need to have a lot of experience in order to do so, which of course takes a lot of time. And a lot of time in Path of Exile isn't something like 20 hours or 50 hours or even 100 hours, it's closer to like 200-300 hours and even more than that. Experience in Path of Exile doesn't involve something like uh, learning a boss's mechanics as you would in some sort of MMO. It involves learning where entrances and exits typically are, or the typical economic rates of certain items or possible affixes on weapons and armor. And yes, you can farm currency a lot quicker if you know the general layouts, and you can practically even speedrun through the 10 acts in order to get to maps in the first couple days of the league, but the thing is that takes an absurd amount of practice. And of course you can always farm currency quicker if you got paid stash tabs, or uh, study the economy of the game and flip your currency, and of course you can acquire currency quicker if you just real money trade, but do you expect a new player or casual player to be okay with this system? Of course not. What makes a lot of games enjoyable is the freedom to play how you want to play, and forcing the player to play the game a certain way in order to complete a lot of the game's content I think is bullshit. Telling players that they need to pick this particular skill and farm this particular map a thousand times because it's got a really good layout for clearing is bullshit. Forcing players to study convoluted mechanics or follow some sort of virtual economy 24-7 is bullshit. The game has so many different skills and maps and things to do. Why are you going to tell them that they don't need to be a hardcore player to complete a lot of what the game has to offer when that method of gameplay requires them to play some sort of strict way that may be different than what they actually want to do? That's not fun. That's a chore. That's a job. There shouldn't be a right way to play the game and a wrong way to play the game. There should be the freedom in being able to tackle the content the way you want to play, it's a video game for fuck's sake, but it sure as hell doesn't feel like that a lot of the time. One thing Path of Exile is often praised for is its complexity, especially in its affixes and its crafting system. And although the affixes and crafting are what makes Path of Exile so unique and what honestly kept me coming back over the years, I've really grown to hate it because of how messy it has become. And this is a personal opinion and I expect a lot of backlash here, and the complexity of the crafting system really isn't bad per se, but I personally think it's a complete mess. There are just far too many affixes to keep track of lately, and I don't really feel like having to remember the hundred plus different outcomes comes on all of these different influences or base types. Not only that, but it also makes items a pain in the ass to replicate, especially when you're following build guides. A lot of popular players who make build guides or videos will have very, very specific rare items for their builds, uh, such as extremely synergistic cluster jewels or armor pieces with obscure affixes that you can only get by extreme luck or under very, very specific circumstances. And this makes mirroring builds very, very difficult, and build guides can then become very misleading with their damage outputs unless you have their exact same gear set. 
and this is completely impossible to do nowadays. And obviously, you can always substitute and get similar uh, similar results, but the player will then have to adapt with the changes and understand which changes can be made and uh, overall expect different behavior in the build. It's not like it was a year or two ago where you can sort of slap on a generic life resist chest and then uh, get a unique axe and then kill everything in the game. Uh, now you have to find a rare that uh, will inflict a curse on hit or has some odd chance to impale or odd chance for poisons to inflict double damage or physical damage over time or added lightning damage per 10 intelligence or some weird shit like that. And unique items are practically all garbage nowadays and can't really conquer the end game. And the game has become focused around these very, very obscure rare items that sometimes feel like they're impossible to obtain without tons and tons of currency. And I think it's good that we can't just copy pasta builds anymore, but then it leaves new and casual players to the wolves and makes theory crafting so much more important. The players are practically on their own nowadays and really can't be expected to make it very far without having an, understand, uh, an understanding about all of the affix possibilities or item influence and things like that. Most players now have to solely follow build guides to get anywhere in the game, and the fact that we can't really do that as easily anymore makes the game that much more of a pain in the ass, and leaves casual players in the dark. Also, since the master rework of Betrayal, I felt that the game has just been overall too overwhelming. There's just far too much to do that leaves the players with a bad case of FOMO, and even has a lot of players missing out on things like crafting recipes, or challenges, or overall league progression. Grinding Your Games has helped this by allowing the players to stack master missions so players don't need to be interrupted with uh, an incursion or a delve run, but the fact of the matter is that putting these things on the back burner can be harmful to player progression. Uh, for example, if you don't delve, you can't obtain your socket recipes, and you'll miss out on a lot of the depth challenges that come every league. Uh, and if you ignore betrayal encounters or safe houses, you lose out on a ton of very specific recipes that you can't really earn anywhere else. And if you ignore your, your atlas, you won't obtain the maps necessary to progress the endgame story. And obviously, nobody has a gun to your head telling you that you need to help Nico or Einar, but it's definitely an awful lot of side content that almost feels required. Meanwhile, progressing your atlas takes a lot of time on its own. And I don't have the time to regather recipes every damn league and go digging through caves for hours while I'm trying to complete all of the maps in the atlas, and I feel like casual players now have to pick a path and choose what they want to lose out on, while people who can play for 8 hours a day get to sort of experience the whole game. Because of all of this, I can no longer recommend this game to anybody at all. There aren't many people that have this kind of time to sink into a video game like this. There aren't many people who really want to deal with the chores and the job of learning everything and theory crafting a character and farming the same area for days. Most people just want to go kill shit and progress a character and get through the game and not get halted and be forced to go sift through the forums for hours and hours. And I'm really hoping Path of Exile 2 will be a breath of fresh air because I don't see myself going back to Path of, Path of Exile for the time being. I love grinding your games. I love Chris Wilson and I love Path of Exile, but I really disagree with its current state, and I hope that, some point, uh, that at some point we do see some improvements in due time. So thank you for watching, everyone, and take care. I'll see you next time.